Welcome back. Today, as we continue highlighting black history, we take a look at the professional women and mothers serving our local community. Here's more. Within the black community, organizations like the Divine Nine Sororities and Fraternities, or NAACP, are most notably seen. But there are other organizations hidden in plain sight. But this one was something, something totally different because instead of just being for me and what I'm doing, it was for our children. It's been amazing. Um, it is an organization whose major pillar is friendships. On January 24th, 1938 in Philadelphia, Marion Stubbs Thomas founded Jack and Jill of America Incorporated, an organization for mothers with kids ages two through 19. The organization is about fostering African-American children in their futures. So being able to create these opportunities that they may not have uh, been able to get to without these connections. With Jack and Jill, mothers hold the membership, but fathers are involved through an auxiliary. See who was part of it locally and nationally uh, made you realize that, wow, this is a great opportunity uh, and we have to take advantage of this for our children. Cultural awareness, educational development, social, recreational, health and civic activities are part of Jack and Jill's five-point programmatic thrust. Your most precious asset is your child, and we want to make sure that we provide every opportunity for them to be successful. And uh, Jack and Jill, Greater Peoria uh, chapter, uh, is another tool in the toolkit to do that, uh, exposing them to different opportunities and resources, helping them foster their uh, civic engagement and community service, uh, professional experiences, and pursuit of educational opportunities. You can see members wearing blue and pink as they donate bicycles, hand out food, tour local museums, and participate in the St. Jude and March of Dimes walks. Locally, we have been a part of Peoria Grown. Um, they have also been a part of several other food banks in the area. Um, and finding just knickknacks and ways to um, and, and golf and things that they've never been able to be a part of. Andre had his toy drive. That was an example of something that they could participate in if they wanted to. And eight years later, Philadelphia also became the founding place for the Lynx Incorporated, founded by Margaret Roselle Hawkins and Sarah Strickland Scott on November 9, 1946. The friendships that I've developed while I've been in there has been amazing. And then the tagline is friendship and service. We're linked in friendship and connected in service. So doing the service in the area has been amazing and it just helps to enrich the friendships that you have in the organization. The links have five facets, services to youth, the arts, national trends and services, international trends and services, and health and human services. The Links Incorporated is uh, an organization that is committed to ensuring and enriching and sustaining the lives of African Americans and people of African descent. Within these facets, the ladies wearing green and white create programming to serve their communities. Programming like pedals or providing education and training to achieve lasting success. With this program, girls were assisted with academics from eighth grade throughout their high school journeys. Our programs are uh, designed to be transformational, and by transformational, we mean that we don't come in and just do one thing and then move on. We want to stay in a community and make a, a change over time. Membership into these organizations is by invitation. At the time, I didn't know a lot about the Lynx Incorporated, so I said yes based off of some things that I heard from friends. When they came to us, they talked about just watching us with our kids. Uh, when we were presented with the opportunity, it was a no-brainer to make sure our children were put in a position of success. And members in these organizations are sometimes considered the black elite. I think that the misconception of we are the elite probably comes from we are accomplished women. Many of the women are professional women, but we're not women who are not relatable. We can communicate with people, we enjoy doing service, we enjoy getting involved and making a difference in people's lives. Day to day, these women are in various leadership roles, working as health professionals, educators, entrepreneurs, lawyers, art professionals, and elected officials, just to name a few. Having that type of example in front of our children is um, one of the greatest things we can truly ask for. And coming up after the break, an interview with Dr. Jocelyn McLean of the Central Illinois Chapter of the Lynx Incorporated. You're watching WMBD News at 4. 
Welcome back. Before the break, we took a look at organizations who gather for social and service activities. And joining us today is Dr. Jocelyn McLean, representing the Central Illinois chapter of the Lynx Incorporated. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Well, we'll first start off, why do you like being a member of the Lynx Incorporated? I love being a member of the Lynx Incorporated because I have met the most amazing women. They're phenomenal women and they're doing phenomenal things. So that's part of it. And then just having an opportunity to give back to my community. Um, I've always learned that you, we all stand on the shoulders of those who've come before us and now it's our turn to turn around and offer back to the community. Okay, and so we saw in the story about Heddles. Could you tell us about that program? How did that, what did y'all do with those young ladies? So those young ladies, uh, we worked with them from the eighth grade through the 12th grade. And basically we gave them an opportunity to dream, to see what we've done and to share who we are with them. We gave them opportunities to build their self-esteem. We talked with them about healthy eating, about uh, stress reduction, about mental wellness. And they just got to see and talk to us about our lives and how we've incorporated those things into our lives. We also helped them with college applications and just encouraged them and showed them that we believed in them. Okay, well, you are here representing the Lynx, but you also had children who graduated through Jack and Jill. How did that benefit your children? Tremendous opportunities for leadership and tremendous opportunities for uh, learning about service, learning about their culture. They had to juggle their schoolwork with organizing things, so time management, organizational activities. Um, overall, they had fun also. All right, so with Jack and Jill and the Lynx, how do these organizations benefit the community as a whole? In the community, we are educating and we are teaching people how to advocate for themselves. We're helping them advocate. Uh, we are collaborating with other organizations. We collaborate with the NAACP. We've collabor collaborated with Susan G. Coleman. And so those things give us an opportunity to elevate our impact and make our programs even stronger when we get into the community and teach about black hair, which is a kidney awareness program. We do things with breast health that show um, individuals how to take care of their health, their wellness, their mental health. Uh, we do literacy programs with children. We're starting one uh, that will be in effect in March, so we'll be um, proud of that. Okay, well, thank you so much, Dr. McLean, for joining us today. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you. And you can watch this whole interview on our website at ciproud.com as we continue to honor black history.